Imagine your 10-year-old self and the days you spent chasing your friends under the sun, strolling around and breathing fresh air. What has changed now? The sun is still the same. The feels different and the air isn't that fresh anymore. Summers are hotter, ice caps are melting, and sea levels are rising. This room is full of adults, and if you feel that things have changed drastically in the last 20 years, then say hello to our world, which is filled with plastic, pollution, and yes, consumerism. In the name of convenience, we are now seeing the impact of our choices we made over the last few years. We don't think our kids will be able to chase their friends under the sun, take a dip at one of the nearby beaches, or enjoy nature as we did. For many years now, you may have been listening to the terms such as global warming, climate change, and pollution. For decades, there has been many alarm bells but not so much action taken in many years. Probably by now, you know what we are going to talk about. We are not here to give another climate emergency talk. Climate change is happening this very moment. It is scientifically proven and we have all witnessed it. The IPCC estimates that global greenhouse gas emissions need to be cut by 45% by the year 2030. If current trends continue, the UN calculates that 1.5 degrees Celsius will be reached before or within the year 2031. Meaning, we have less than 10 years to our planet gets too hot to survive. To make a difference, we need to make a choice in what we eat, how we shop, how we dress, the way we travel, and we need to make it our habit. We started our first climate action campaign near our home in Hong Kong at the ages of five and seven. We had little or no idea of the bigger side of climate change. It was like Pandora's box that kept opening and leading us to this place where we are urging each one of you to make a choice. Like many people, you may have questions such as, what are the individual impacts on climate change? How much fossil fuels can be reduced within my five minute showers or plant-based meals. Wish we were climate scientists to precisely answer those questions. When I was in grade three, I saw an image of a turtle strangled in plastic since birth. It was heartbreaking and I had many questions about our everyday consumption habits from my parents. They loved buying sodas in plastic bottles. It made me sad to see that our life was wrapped in plastic. The more we researched about plastic, the more we found out about bigger issues, such as climate change, global warming, and fossil fuels. We felt we needed to do something about it and that we are either living in a utopia or the systems and communities around us have chained themselves into profit-making monsters. It was then we started the journey of my green mantra. Mantra is a Sanskrit word for chant that when repeated becomes a habit. And we want everyone to make climate action a habit. I clearly remember six-year-old Reha imagining our situation as a diamond, 
Okay, let me explain. Individual actions are at the bottom tip of the diamond. When many individuals take action together, it forms a wide center and becomes communities of change. These communities will then push larger corporations and systems to change. This is called systemic change. It is a very simple diamond. Individuals at the bottom, which bring together communities of change, which push the system to change. One day, we decided to go out and stand in public with big boards about the climate crisis. We made colorful signboards, but people kept ignoring us. Soon, we realized that no one was going to come to us if we only stand with our climate action signboards. We made fun game boards with everyday climate actions individuals can take. People played fun games with us, pledged to take individual actions and learn how these individual actions collectively can make a big difference. Yes, even she found it thrilling running behind pedestrians. People made fun of us and ignored us. The wise ones picked their pledge and argued and bullied us, expecting we were some sort of climate scientist. We have spoken to thousands of people outside offices, shopping malls, residential and residential areas. We realize that people either don't know about climate change or don't realize the impact of the choices we make on the climate. Here in Hong Kong, we see restaurants serve takeaway food in styrofoam boxes. Supermarkets sell fruits and vegetables wrapped in so much single-use plastic. As a consumer, we just don't care. We live very close to beaches and how much we would love to take a dip in the water and get messy in the sand. We cannot, since it's full of waste created by us in Hong Kong. We feel sad to see shores filled with garbage and trash. So in the month of February last year, we decided to clean the beaches every day. What we cleaned up was many styrofoam takeaway boxes, masks, cutlery, straws, and tons of plastic. These acts always put things into perspective. We learned where our toothbrushes and toys end up. We now know that it is really hard to clean plastic from the ocean. Not only were we successful in collecting five metric tons of waste, but learning the recycling of various plastic material. We learned that it is easy to produce plastic, but extremely difficult to recycle. Wonder why it even exists in our daily lives. We know that plastic is a byproduct of fossil fuels. It is a main cause of climate change and global warming. Last year, we wanted to visit Glasgow, where leaders of the world gathered to measure their climate goals and carbon budgets. Many big promises were made, and many more were questioned. We found some cool sounding topics from the Hong Kong delegates on clean air and green energy. Yet, they missed a touch upon the very important topics, such as overconsumption, illegal animal trafficking, the dark side of shark finning, its impact on marine ecology, and many more grassroots issues. Did you know that Hong Kong is among the top three largest beef consumers in the world? with 114 grams per capita and nearly 50% more than the United States? 
In our weekly climate strike, one of the pledges is a plant-based diet. Does that mean you should stop eating meat and consuming animal products? No, we do not advocate such radical changes that can create a divide amongst our communities. We advocate a balance, a reduction of overconsumption. One such example is to introduce animal product tax and subsidize for plant-based produce. Last year, Hong Kong faced some of the hottest summers in decades. One such afternoon, right after a climate strike, our mom treated us to smoothies at one of the popular coffee chains. We found out that they were charging four extra dollars for plant-based milk. Our mom explained to us that plant-based milk is more expensive than cow's milk. This did not make sense to us, so we went straight to a nearby supermarket and got a liter of cow's milk at $29 and a liter of oat milk at $34. Oat milk was obviously $5 more than cow's milk. For each liter of milk, coffee shops can make up to four to five cups of beverage. And imagine if you pay four extra dollars for plant-based beverage then how much money do these coffee shops make out of our choices? Yes, 16 to $20 for each liter. This is called vegan tax that is charged each and every one of us in the name of greenwashing by these large companies. We created a petition against them after hearing no response to our several emails. We know that individual actions cannot change the world, yet we choose to not sit on the fence and wait for the system to change. We raise awareness about climate change and its impact. Once we are aware, these large companies cannot fool us, cannot force us to be part of climate change cannot make profit out of our choices. We're at the bottom of the diamond, and together we can form a community of change, which will then push the system to change. So the next time you hear companies and systems greenwashing, setting plans for 2050 or 2070, remember, that our planet and nature will be dead by then. And there is no profit or business on a dead planet. The next time you hear scientists talking about climate change, see children like us on the streets fighting for our future, listen to them. My planet is burning. Your planet is burning. Our planet is burning. Join us!